Alright, hello! Welcome to the stream. I'm just gonna talk while India keeps typing because she's she's going. She's just going. Um, this morning we're gonna be doing the Anna Morning um, Challenge, which this week was hands and feet. Um, the, ge the challenge was to animate a gesture um, being undertaken by uh, a hand or a foot. So I think we've got 11 submissions to get through today. Um, let's hoping we get through them all. Uh, India, are you about done? Okay. Oh, okay. Um, that was all I had to say. She's still typing. India's um, writing out something for someone, and it's important. So we'll just we'll just chill. How's everyone doing? You're vibing. That's good. <laughs> you think we were promised a goofy movie? That was a joke. Sorry, Wave FN. We'd probably get um, copyright struck. Let's just start the goofy movie and see where it goes. Sure. I could describe the goofy movie in, in verbal form. If you want. How's piggy jousting coming along? Um, it's good. <laughs> it was all a goof. Um, I haven't worked on it uh, in the code wise for a little bit, but I was making our assets. I'm concentrating on making the little lobby environment of the interior of the ship that I was doing. So I was working on a um, concept and model for the fish forge, which I want to put at the back of the, um, like the interior of the ship as a sort of um, light source slash shop front or uh, the big chonky cat blacksmith character. You want to hear Doug's goofy movie retelling? We open on a vast landscape filled with golden wheat and the deepest blue skies. We move forward through the fields until we stumble upon Max in his dream realm as he imagines himself hanging out with Roxanne. The pair, they lie. Wait, isn't she up on like some sort of pedestal first? Uh, anime sent in something today where it was stated that piglets were called hoglings, porkets, hog babes, or gruntlings before the mid 1800s. I like those better than piglets, to be honest. Hogling sounds great. <laughs> Keep narrating, this was great. Uh, the two share a glance until suddenly Max's. Deformities begin to grow and he metamorphoses into his worst nightmare. A gigantic version of his father. No, <laughs> Lightning ensues and he wakes from his dream. It's time for school. Oh, yuck. <laughs> anyway, uh. India, you're here. I'm here. There we go. Um, I oh. am going to get Twitch. Welcome. You're only 11 minutes late. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm so used to us being like two hours late. This is great. We're kind of on time. Kind of. Almost. A little bit. I woke her up, you guys. You I know, some people settle for the typical thing, living all their life, standing in the wings. It ain't a question of if, just a matter of time. Until I'm moving to the front of the line. Are you reciting Goof Troop lyrics? The goofy movie. Yeah. Power line. Yeah. Same thing. I see a question every move that I make. You gotta believe me. I got what it takes. It's a piece of cake. I don't 
to stream on in mornings. <laughs> Almost on time. Even when I'm trying to drop people lines. Okay, let's see. Uh, think sketch, right? Yes. Okay. How That's is everybody? Do 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 They're not making out, they're grooming. Oh, you mean the ones in the fridge? Oh, I don't know. Why are they in the fridge? That's my first question. It was the fridge just opened to discover them. All right, India, you got, got it up on screen yet? Yes. Cool. I do. Boom. Yay. 3D R O T T M N T. You're first up. Hey. Okay. So um, the last animal morning challenge was to animate either hands or feet doing a simple gesture, because they're the things that we are all scared of, and therefore it makes a lot of sense to just plunge in and get some practice doing whichever one you feel kind of weakest at. So yeah, this is gonna be a whole, a whole bunch of hands and feet animation, guys. Dark Bart, are you the only one who did feet? Maybe. You might have been the only one that did feet. Maybe. In which case, you know, kudos to you, because I think a lot of people probably are more intimidated by feet than hands. So. You win by default. Yes, you get the you get the foot prize. I'm here to deduct points. Deduct points. Yeah. What do you mean? That's my role. From what? From people. Did, how many do they start off with? I don't know. What does the point system mean? It means humor and fun. <laughs> the point system means humor and fun. Yeah, like uh, 3D ROTTMNT, I will deduct 10 points for removing... There's only three fingers in the thumb. Where's the fourth finger? <laughs> Where is it? I mean... I guess, I guess that is a criticism that you could make, um, but then again, it could just be that the model that they're using has three fingers. That is perfectly fine. There are plenty of things that you would animate with three fingers. Turtles have two fingers and a thumb, right? Yeah, it, it depends on if you're counting the thumb as a finger or not. Yeah. Oh, I can hear myself. That's not good. Let me mute the stream. There we are. How about like ableist? Anyway, that was only I'm only kidding. All right, let's have a look then. It's nice to be back on Sync Sketch again. It's been ages. So thank you very much for taking part. 3D R R O T T M T. Ooh, super cool! It's almost like a magician doing a magic trick. Love that. That's very cool. Yeah, that's super cool. It's very master hand like as well, in the way that you have kind of the wrists, but you don't have the forearms or anything. I would say it's always going to be um, good practice to have the forearms on there, but if the model you're going with is like floating hands, then it's totally fair enough. The timing is very nice and snappy. Yeah, it's satisfying. Satisfying yeah. to watch. Clock. Yeah, I like the way that when you have um, this bit here. Yeah, particularly this bit. Um, you have offset, you have made the twinning feel less apparent by offsetting when they move. So you have the, the right hand, screen right hand move faster or you have it move first. So it, it breaks up the symmetry a little bit. Yeah. I would still say the hands feel like 
very symmetrical. And I can see it's probably because you've saved time by just duplicating the animation. Mm -hmm. Which is like a nice clever way, honestly, to uh, save yourself some time. Um, I'd be tempted to just tweak a few things, like once you paste it over, just like give it a little wiggle around on some of the fingers, just so they're not 100% um, symmetrical. Just because, particularly with this beginning bit, everything is very, very symmetrical to one another. Like, uh... Even to the feeling of these particle effects, you could throw them off a bit more, you know? Make them feel a little bit more organic. So, you could have like one over here, a couple here. Just to make it feel a little bit, um, a little bit less like it's a perfect mirror image. And again, like this is nice that you've broken up the heart shape a little bit more. Don't be, don't be afraid to have that happen even more. In fact, it might be nice for the heart shape to distort a bit more there. Um, cause right now it feels like the bits which are dragging out of the heart um aren't actually connected to the heart itself because the heart itself doesn't change shape at all um you know whereas if you had like a play-doh heart or something you'd made if you would pull a bit out of it the rest of the heart would shrink or at least be pulled along with it mm -hmm. um but because there's there's no difference in size here it feels almost like the kind of liquidy bits you have coming off it are behind it rather than coming off it because they don't seem to be affecting the heart itself. I'd be tempted to like give that a little bit more like... Oh, sorry for... I just punched the microphone. How could you punch the microphone? Easily. I'm reaching for my drink and it was on the path. A little bit more asymmetry and um, a little bit more push and pull to it so it actually distorts the shape. I think that'll go a long way to making it feel more convincing. So remember that you want to keep the same amount of um, volume when you are distorting something like this. Push and pull. Hot. Don't be afraid to change volume. Uh, feel free to post it later on Twitter, Tib, if you'd like. And just um, tag it. Beware too much twinning in the posing. Uh, no, you can't submit old work. Yeah, the the whole point is that you um, you take up the challenge and you do it like you try and do it in the time limit and everything. Um, it's like a call to action. So if the action was done two years ago for a different project, it doesn't have quite the same ring. In the posing. That looks like I've written posing. Let me just fix that. In the posing. Yeah. Pose to pose. Like, think about how as the hands unfold, you could have you know, the fingers unfold at different rates, even. We got a nice fingers at different rates on a habo coming up. Oh yeah? Yeah. I'm just, I'm just using my hand, sorry. I'm like staring at my hand and using it. Yeah, anyway, let me... Now that I've stared at my hand for two minutes and just looked at it moving. Everybody look at your hands. <laughs> Everybody look at your hands. So is the overlaps nice again beware of twinning? 
and then we have I really like the timing by the way the snappy timing of this is really nice feeling like you have a nice variety of eases and pops going on that I like it might be nice to start to get a bit of rotation in this card if a card indeed this is because you could start it rotating here which might be nice Because one thing that I think I'm not seeing a lot of uh, in this animation at the minute is hand rotation. Oh, look, there we are in the back. Nice. Yeah, I think you could work a little bit more with sort of hand rotation and less hands kind of moving flat to the screen. If you were to give this like a little bit of subtle rotation, I think that would go a long way to making the hands feel more 3D. By which of course I mean three dimensional, not as in you would make your 2D drawings feel as if they were 3D animated instead, but that you would break convincing dimension within your 2D drawings. So India, do you have any um, handy drawing tips? Aha, aha, ha. Um, I mean, using your own hands as reference is always great because we have them, so that's helpful. Um, I'd say don't be afraid to push and exaggerate the hands like you would any other part of the body. Like whenever I do hand poses, I always try to make them expressive by like really pushing them. I think that helps a lot. Also, like, I'm a massive fan of hand acting and shots of hands in things. Anyone who's seen my boards probably knows this, but um, I love doing shots of, of hands because I think they really say a lot about a character and how they feel. They can say a lot in the moment. Tip knows all about your um, hands and your boards. Yeah. I bet she does. I did a lot in Starlight Brigade. But um, Tip's probably like, Tip's seen Neon Genesis Evangelion too. And I think a lot of the shots of hands in that really affected me. I love the way that show um, focuses on hands and uses them like symbology. I think there's like a lot of power in showing someone reaching for something like that says a lot about their character and you know a lot about how strong that desire is yeah there we go um it was the hand reaching story beat that you'd drawn that led to strive being called strive yeah It's true. I'd say um, the spacing between the two hands feels very similar right here, which makes it um, kind of confusing at first to know which hand um, is which. This trail that you have helps. You could delay this hand, add a bit of overlap, like have it over here. So the spacing is slightly different. It's slightly wider on this background hand here. Just add a bit of variety and texture. To the timing so that both hands aren't moving in the same spacing oh my gosh oh i know what's going on i have touch on oh is that causing like that's why yeah. this is why i never have touch on i bought a a cintiq way back when when i bought one and i was like touch that sounds amazing i'll pay extra for that I've just spent my entire life with it turned off because it's such a pain. Your entire life. Yeah, my entire, well, oh, my entire life that I've had this. We need your help. Yeah. Hello. Commodore Morgan, thank you for the raid. Welcome thank into you. the Anna Morning Challenge Animation Breakfast Club. Yeah. 
We're currently looking through submissions from folks who've uh, submitted animations for the Animoring Challenge. Uh, this week's theme was um, to animate hands and feet. Hands and or feet. How are you doing? How was your stream? Welcome in Raiders. The problem with the touch is that every time I use it, it registers the part of my hand that's leaning on the screen as a touch. So it's like impossible to draw unless I keep my, my hand away from the screen. So you could just have the hand set at different times here. So if you delay this hand coming across here, boop, boop, from the screen right to screen left, then you could have this overshoot frame happen the frame after here instead. Mm -hmm. And then the timing between the two hands would just be offset a little bit, which I think would feel nice. So here I'm not entirely sure how we're getting from this pose to this pose. So both hands now are holding the card. Honestly, it might actually help for you just to do something simple like to have the card be a different colour. Or the two hands be one colour each. Yeah, um, just it's more something to just like pick out the card here uh, among all the shapes, <laughs> you know? Because it feels like the card's rotating. Um, but also the hands are switching because it's no longer sandwiched between these two fingers. Mm. Like now it's between the fingers of the foreground hand instead and the background hand has kind of let go of it. But I didn't really see that happen. So it might be nice if you can like just add in an extra pose here um, if it doesn't mess with your timing too much to like kind of show how that happens or at least have like some kind of anticipation pose of the fingers about to close on it. I think um, also if you're describing uh, the thumb, I think it's often good to have like a T-junction overlap um, to indicate whether the, the thumb is like in front of or behind. So what I mean by that is like if you had... Oh, are you talking... Here? Yeah. yeah. Like, or you could have the, the vertical come down into that sort of like fleshy pan pad so that you can tell which way the hand is because right now it's looking a little. Yeah, I often little add a little pad. indication of knuckles as well. So I'd add the knuckles just before the, the fingers start. Yeah, Tib says, animating sleight of hand and making it clear what's happening is an interesting conundrum. Yeah, yeah, it's true. You have to like kind of balance that. Let's see. Boop. I will honestly say I was not expecting to see um, a magic card trick. <laughs> I like that you went that way. That's really cool. Hey, yeah. Baldro. How are you doing? Same thing here. Just watch. Um, watch also that you're not putting the thumb too far down the hand. Like, make sure that that join is in there. So it doesn't feel like it's kind of another offshoot from the wrist. Yeah. Also, I saw Will Slaney in the chat. Hey, Will, how you doing? Oh, I'll go look up what um what they put in the in the. Oh yeah, also Coda was nominated for an award, wasn't it? Very recently, Mike. Uh, it was, yeah, Anglem. I think it, um, 
didn't win, but it was nominated. I can't remember which category it was, unfortunately. But they were all in French. Ha! <laughs> um, uh, 3D Rise of the TMNT said, No matter how many times I try, I can't draw thumbs. <laughs> thumbs are tricky. Uh, let me see if I can give you some, some help with it. I like the nice eases you have going on here. It would be nice to see um, a little bit more of that coming into the fingers and thumbs here. And wrists as well. Don't forget that the wrist join is also something that you can use. Like, there's a little bit of overshoot here on the um, little finger, which also acts as anticipation into the next move, which I appreciate. But remember that... Um, so you see here... How do I describe this? You see here, we have this wrist break happening. Mm -hmm. You know, the hand is, is coming up and the wrist is leading it. So we have this like wrist break and now the hand is about to go down again. But when the hand goes down, like you can reverse that because right now the wrist break stays kind of the same. So don't be afraid to like change the wrist pose up and give that some drag, you know, because the hand is going to be moving from the elbow, um, which is, you know, the, the chain of command is um, elbow, wrist, hand. And each of those is in a chain with one another that you can use for, for drag and overlap and such. So it will help your hand poses feel a little bit less stiff if you kind of utilize that wrist a little bit more. You know, like here the wrist break is the same again and, and you know, making it feel like it's coming from the same place. You know, even if it's floating hand. Um, even if it's a floating hand, we can feel like the wrist is actively a part of that and is not just... Is know. that a tween hand, maybe? Oh yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, would be nice. You know, and you get some nice subtle wrist action here. Um, when we get to Habo, who's I've already seen because I've been on Twitter, um, you'll see what I mean by like using the wrist to create overlap. Like, there's a lot of subtlety that you can get. Do you want to jump to Habos to compare? Um, no, or... Okay. We can do Habo next. Uh, nice job, though. When this effect sweeps by, be careful of making it feel too even. Like, the spacing on the effects. It has some ease, which is nice, but I think you can push that even more. You know? A wise person once said to me that you can push effects more. Who was that? I think it might have been Teeb. Ah. It was either Teeb or David. Ah. Just to make the shapes a little bit more interesting by pushing that spacing a little bit. But yeah, it'd be really nice here to, to see the fingers and thumb and such engage a little bit more. Uh, when it comes to the thumb, what I tend to do is, um, I think about the pad as being part of it, mm -hmm. which helps me with the join a lot. Yeah, you get that overlap. Yeah. So I think hopefully this will help you to think about the thumb pad. Like we have two pads, one on either side of our hand. Which you can see when you crinkle your hand up. Like fold, fold it lengthwise, you know. Thumb has a H in it. Your thumb. <laughs> your thumb. 
yeah, so there's a pad here. There's like a fleshy pad here as well. This is how I think about it. So, um, and those join to hard, harder bone here. There's like two little bones that come down. Are those not tendons? Yeah, they probably are. <laughs> okay. Um, or in the Terminator, they're wires. All I know is I have them, so I draw them. Yeah, I think those are tendons. I don't see those on me. But you have your little raptor wrists. So. I do. And then there's like a pad up here as well that the, the fingers kind of join to. And this is how I always think about it. And then the knuckle would be on this side and is just where the finger starts. Good morning, Kurzuk. So I always think about that shape. And then when it comes to the wrist bone, that is like slightly lower because it's, um, it's on the wrist just where it joins onto the hand. So rather than it being the uh, the hinge here, oh my gosh, where's my pen gone? Why is, there we go. Rather than it being here where the actual join is, it's just below it. I don't feel like you have to put the tendons on. I'm basically just showing you like, this is how I think about hands when I draw them. So thumb pad, finger pad. And wrist bone. Cool. Which probably has like a much more technical name. Awesome work, 3D R O T T M and T. Thank you very much for taking part in the challenge. Thank you. I hope this has been helpful. Awesome work. Great job and really like nice choice to do something which is sleight of hand. Crow mail. <laughs> Got a crow mail. So <clears throat> it's from Rukiki. Who says, this is my first time catching your guys' stream and I love it. Aw, thank you very much. Why, Thanks for thank being you. here. Welcome. If this is your first time, do you feel free to like shoot us any questions you have? Or ask chat. Chat knows all. You're allowed one intimate personal question. I'm just so, kidding. <laughs> speaking of um, subtle wrist movement, yeah. I'm going to skip over to Habo just so we can see, like you were saying because it's relevant to the point I was making. Yeah. Some really nice subtle wrist movement. So as we watch this, pay attention to the push and pull between the wrist and the hand. There we go. So you see how the, uh, the wrist kind of levering there at the end gives you the impression that um, Zagreus, who this hand belongs to, I'm assuming, is preparing to pull it back up. Like, you can feel that the shoulder starts to travel first, then the elbow, then the wrist, and everything's pulling up in a chain. So that subtle rotation there on the wrist says a whole lot about what the rest of the body's doing. Hmm. <laughs> Robin says, this makes me feel things. Yeah. I love also how, about how you're using the tattoo here to show the rotation on the top of the hand. To make us really feel like the uh, the forearm's coming a little bit closer to the camera. And, you know, the we're seeing more of the broad top of the hand here. As it, as it goes, um, as it wraps around the hilt of the sword. What was it, Mike? I was going to do the crow mail for you. <gasps> You're going to do the crow mail for me. Yeah. Go for it. <laughs> but Phyllis Phantasma says, heading to bed, guys, but I'll have to watch the VOD. I love crow mail. 
Aww. Thank you, feelers. I'm sorry to cheap you on the crow mail. I didn't hear very many calls. <laughs> All right. Um. So I like if I were to think of things to nitpick about this. <gasps> Thank you, feelers, Phantasma, so much for the for the gifted sub. Thank you, Stomps. And this is nitpicking because this is beautiful. Like it would be um this first pose here. If it's not going to mess with your spacing too much. Um. Then I'd either make sure that your silhouette here overlaps the sword or create a little bit more distance between the hand and the sword so that you're breaking that silhouette up and you're not having uh, tangents with the fingers on the edge of the sword. So it'll probably require you moving the whole hand back a little bit. Chat horny for Zagreus says Hinka Pinkar. Thank you for the sub. <laughs> You've done this, Havo. Watch tangents on fingers. Just maybe shift that drawing back a tiny bit to break that up a little bit. Bop, bop, bop. Lovely how the hands are spreading out. Really lovely arcs going on. I like nice sense of 3D. Like I said, especially the, the way that tattoo moves. Mm. It's super nice the way that you can see that it's following um, the second knuckle there. And then this very subtle motion of the um, the wrist starting to pull upwards. And that subtle stretch in the arm. It's beautiful. Like I don't think I have I have other feedback to give you on this, Habo. I guess you could you could stop that um that thumb pop from happening there if you wanted. You could um have the thumb start to push its way along a little bit here. instead or you could have it linger a little bit afterwards if you wanted to keep that um i think it's gorgeous though you've done a beautiful job very nice subtle motion did you end up getting any reference for this because it feels it feels referenced watching that finger join there. Maybe due to be a tiny bit lower. Everything else uh, is right on. I love the shape of the wrist. So nice. Yeah, you did. It was a video on YouTube from a movie, guy grabbing sword like that. It's super nice, isn't it? The way that the fingers wrap around. It's a, it's an interesting thing for those of us who are interested in studying hands and uh, and animating hands. That when you close your hands, uh, usually the inclination is to hold is to close your hands, little finger first. And when you open your hands, the temptation is to open um, index finger first. Just interesting. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful work, Mike. See, Mike? Ha! <laughs> Abba, super inspirational. I was staring at Mike as I was saying that. Stop staring at me. What you up to? Uh, your Majesty a Cloud is asking whether we got their submission. I'm asking them what name did they submit as. Oh, I see. Do you have anything to say about, about Hallows? It's very good. Um, I don't see your submission then. I'm sorry. Hmm. But you submitted it using the form and everything. 
these? These are lovely drawings. Are these um are these drawings that you did yourself or are these drawings that um you you nabbed off a study page because they're really nice. Like this is a nice way to break down the hand. It's much nicer than the way that I, <laughs> that I showed 3D R O T T M and T like a couple of critiques ago. If you have the source for these, I'd love to to have a look at that. Yeah, they're very cool. Yeah, but it's very clear and nice. All right, let's have a look. It's nice that you've included the video that you used. Super cool. So I'm assuming the first one is almost like a trace over the top. I think when you're copying reference, I personally find it um, that I learn more from it if I have the reference side by side like this and to copy it like that rather than actually tracing over the top because it forces me to think about the volumes more um, because when you're tracing you can be tempted to kind of just mindlessly follow the line without really thinking about what the volumes are or how each part affects the others. Whereas when you are drawing it next to instead, then you have to make sure your animation still works within itself and it forces you to double check um, that you've got the distances between things right and such as well. But yeah, we see here one of the, the best tools for drawing hands, which is the nail. I used to, um, I used to hate drawing nails. Can you believe it? Now that, now I am, um, fully converted into naildom because like look how much you can show the curvature of the finger and which way it's facing with the nails like it makes a huge difference like if I'm just to draw like a little thumb here let me put this on then like this is entirely different I have a fun fact about nails and animation. To this? Yeah, well, like, um, same same exterior shape, different interior detail. Like, so helpful in showing the rotation. Um, India loves to put nails on her animation model so much that in an animation in which the character was wearing gloves, she also drew nails uh -huh. <laughs> on the character. And it was only discovered because I was the one coloring it, and I was like, "Wait, is this is this a hand in here? Like, is this does this have a glove on or not?" And I was like, "Yeah, it has a glove on." And like, <laughs> well, then why have you given them nails? <laughs> oh, because they're so good, yo. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, it's nice to see you um, combining the reference here with this hand model where you've broken it up into the different parts. That's super cool to see. Like, nice gerb. That is a good way to study and practice. Yeah, you're identifying what those different regions of the hand are um, yeah. based on the reference. Yeah. And color coordinating. It's a good thought, sure. I like that a lot. I think you're... Um, Particularly the lines on your palm get a little wishy-washy. Um, they're a little squiggly. But... Yeah. I think that's a side effect of tracing. Um, though. I like this little smear frame here, that's cool. You know, one of the side effects of tracing is, like, you start to wonder whether this, this join here is concave or convex. And it switches between each time. Uh, whereas if you're drawing this next to, there's more inclination for you to make the frames make sense together. So you have to kind of choose one. I would say you were probably right in thinking that um, it was convex like this. Because if you're thinking about the hand right now, what we're essentially seeing 
And I always think about the hand like this kind of shape. Like a uh, a soft rectangle, essentially. Then this is essentially what we're seeing. So the finger's going to be um, joined on with this kind of shape rather than that kind of shape. Because this is going to be kind of overlapping almost. Sorry, I have to put a scribble to to get the previous note off the screen. So that's not a note. That's just <laughs> that's just me putting a scribble on the screen so that my note clears off. So it's a nice gesture to choose too. Lots of nice, interesting hand poses in there. And then this is this is you um you doing it afterwards like I, I think it's awesome that you did this study and then you were like now I'm gonna do it again but I'm gonna like kind of do it almost from not from memory but I'm gonna do it with a hand model now of my own I think I'm just looking at this um and seeing if you've reused frames, which I don't think you have. Um, you don't. You don't need to animate this entirely on ones. That sounds like it would be very difficult, especially when it comes to hands, which are very precise things. Don't be afraid to to copy and paste your drawings if things are barely moving, and just tweak those drawings a little bit to keep them more consistent. Just because it will save you work, you know, from having to draw every single frame. As well as that, keeping things consistent can help you to accent the movements more because it becomes like more clear and there's more contrast between the stillness and the movements. Cool. So let's see. I'm looking here between these two and I think that's a nice little movement you've got down there at the bottom. India. You, what? Would you call this digital mu uh, animation? What digit I... digital animation. Ah, oh, because hands and digits. Mm. Very good. You nailed it. I really like this um this lower left hand that you have here at the beginning of the gesture. Like this, um this movement here is probably too much of a pop, but up to this point. Karen, thank you for the raid. Yeah. Welcome in. Thank you so much for the raid. We're doing some critiques of uh, an anime morning challenge. How did how did your stream go? How are you guys? So yeah, I think this this movement pop here is maybe a little bit extreme. Um, again, like remembering, sorry to use you as, as an example, Habo, um, but remembering that this arm is attached to an elbow, which is attached to a forearm. Like, you're probably not going to have the elbow suddenly shift down here. So it's a bit odd to have the um, the wrist move like that. So always think about like what it's connected to. And what's happening there to, to make that. To make that happen, because I would assume that if if the uh, the wrist were to rotate up like that from the forearm that the the hand would be a bit more like this you know to go along with it it would be weird to have the hand be the thing which stays most steady in space when the movement's coming from the uh, the elbow it almost gives the impression of one of those birds where you move its body around and the head like stays in the same place and you're like bird how do you do this So remember where the movement's coming from, I guess is my note here. Do you want to do do our spiel, Mike? Um, sure. Uh, we're Dog and Swift. We predominantly work in um, 
uh, animation. Um, we previously worked on animated music videos. If this is your first time here, um, I've got a showreel uh, running in the lower left of the stream showing some of the projects that we've worked on in the past, namely uh, the music videos for Starlight Brigade and Magnum Blitz. Swift is a cool kick-ass animator and she's the one giving all these very cool feedback hints and tips. Her MB says I like how the show real magic appeared. Did it? Oh Mike, well done. <laughs> I thought you would call me out and, uh called me out for that. Well I'm assuming someone asked about it. Or did, were you just not like you guys will want to see this? for the follows guys thank you well i thought about just sneaking on there and saying here's a sneaky show reel but then you were like hey mike do you want to give us but give our spiel and i was like oh this syncs up okay yeah it all worked out in the end there we go so i think one of the things i like about this lower left drawing that you have going on um, is that the the blue line drawing, it feels a little bit um, blobby and less articulated in terms of the draftsmanship of the drawing itself compared to this one which feels like there's more finesse in the, the hand model itself that you're drawing. Um, like you've lost some of the nice shape that you have here on the fingers and the thumb. It feels like it's kind of just ballooned out into something which is more nondescript. So... Um, I'd say you try and keep the same finesse that you have here in the blue drawing. See, boop, boop, boop. Smooth frames are always fun. Yeah, you see the problem with um the problem with redrawing every frame is that because things are moving every frame, the really subtle motions like we're seeing here at the top with the reference are kind of getting lost in the overall movement of the lines that are just moving every frame anyway. So when it comes to like really subtle movements like this, you want to be really getting that feeling of rotation. So let me show you. Move this to 75. So this is your... I'm just going to trace over it. This is your hand. Also, if you guys have any questions um, about what we're talking about, or like any animation questions that we can throw in during the critiques, let us know. Yeah, do feel free to ask us or ask chat. Chat are all really cool artists and cool people, so I'm sure that they'll be able to answer anything that we can't. So, <laughs> Karzik asks, how do I animate good like India? <laughs> um... I don't, I still feel like I don't animate particularly good. I'm still, I'm still learning just like you guys. I still make mistakes and stupid things and don't understand anatomy properly and, you know, but every day I learn a little bit more. But that's kind of what makes it fun. Ingrid says, you watch this stream. <laughs> you watch it if nothing else to to realize that really no one really knows what they're doing and we're all just winging it but you know sometimes it works out and it's fun to learn either way so <laughs> Habo recommends maybe India should watch the dog swift stream then she'll get good yeah maybe <laughs> I don't know though I don't like the girl on there um I think she uh she talks about a lot of stuff she doesn't properly understand when it comes to animation, so just saying. I like that you've added a little bit more angularity to those fingers. Yeah, just, like... Just, just a little bit more definition. It helps to really think about... I often think about things as very blunt cubes or very blunt rectangles. Um, it just helps me to keep track of where everything is. I'm just trying to make sure that the shape is kind of consistent between the two. 
and then the thumb is going away from Thank you. the index finger. So. The soup man is here. Welcome. Hello, soup man. <laughs> Thank you for being here. <laughs> So it's a lot more subtle than this little movement, actually. But I would probably do this by copying and pasting the, the frame and then adjusting it. For maybe it's liar liar, um, where the uh, the character pretend tries to do the Jim Carrey claw impression, but he's like, "Oh, I have the hook." Oh, the hook! It's gonna get you. <laughs> And then if I just add a nail on here, then you guys will see that this finger is rotating up a little bit, according to the reference. You see, and if I was um, reusing the drawings here, it'd be much easier to keep these consistent. Like a lot of these lines would need redrawing from me. Hold on, my shortcuts stopped working. My everything has stopped working. Uno momento, por favor. Maybe I should give it a refresh. I think my everything is frozen, sorry guys. Oh no worries, it gives me time to uh, throw this up on screen. The hook. You actually have it. Oh, I found it. That's hilarious. <laughs> okay, there we go, it started working again. Praise be. The claw. Yeah. yeah, you can imagine that if I was able to copy paste this, I could keep it even more consistent. But you want to make sure that you're getting the subtleties like this, um, and that's pretty hard. If your drawing is gonna is moving every single frame, it's hard to distinguish the intentional movements from the non-intentional movements. You know, and then the palm is pushing outwards a little bit. as the uh, forearm is rotating. See that the forearm is kind of rotating down. One movement is much more broad. But it's much more of this kind of thing. So just watch for the subtleties. That was that was one of the aspects of this challenge. I think was the focus was that, that articulation of yeah of cause, subtle form. Yeah, because you got them in the in the um, in the study you did just before. Just be careful not to lose them in translation when it gets to you actually converting the animation onto the model that you want. Watch also for things like. Um, uh, maintaining the volume what I like to do is I find one pose that I really like that I've drawn and I copy and paste that on all the frames or just have it on a different layer so that it's always next to my animation and I can always use it to measure proportions um, so for example this thumb here is much bigger than like this thumb mm. so just be careful that you're not losing a lot of mass in the hand as your animation's going along. As you like and especially um, especially like when you get to whoop, when you get to here. Like the difference in size is is a bit much I think. I do appreciate the little bulge on the top of the 
Yeah, the that's rest. nice. L little fat bulge. <clears throat> I get that. Yeah, so watch for these little pops. You see how um, the thumb pad is is much leaner and then it pops out. But there's not really a reason for it to pop out between these two frames. Unmotivated displacement of mass. Minus 10 points from Gryffindor. Yeah, I mean, the again, it's, it's helpful to think about things in terms of cubes. So, if I was to think about this as being like, this is... This is my hand shape. This is my basic hand. Uh, here, without any of the fingers or anything on it. Just a little blunt cube or rectangle. Um. Then here, this top side is rotating down a little bit. So you can see that the hand at the top is rotating. So this is flattening out a little bit. You can do it your own way. I don't think that's the lyrics, but that's in my head. Take control of your own life. That's what it is. So just trying to get that rotation there. And then here, we're just continuing that rotation down. And that's going to give you like, knowing what those shapes are doing underneath is going to give you a consistency. And it's uh, going to mean that it doesn't feel like your, your fingers and your thumb pad and such are jumping around unnecessarily. Because they're going to be rooted to something underneath that's consistent. Mm -hmm. Rather than like free floating. In which case, pretty much anything can happen with them. Thanks for the follow. Because there's, there's, there's no like basis for them to be attached to. Oh, my alarm's going off. That's what that is. Yeah, I think it's my iPad. Where is that? It's next to me on my left, I believe. <laughs> And again, it's just continuing to rotate around. But I think having that and knowing what's happening with that is going to be hugely helpful to you. Okay. I think you need to move on to the next one shortly. Okay. Whoops. I was just trying to make sure that the shape of this was kind of consistent because I felt like it was shrinking a little bit over time. This would be one of the things that I would have pasted next to my camera so, so I could kind of check and make sure that I was keeping it consistent. But yeah, I hope that this is helpful. I hope this has given you like a couple of things that you can um, you can do to make your life easier and to make your studies more effective. So um, let's see. Don't be afraid. to hold drawings drawings sure you know what i mean or copy paste to keep consistency um Look for the subtleties.
and find those big base shapes to base everything on just to ground it this is a nice bullet point list and check your volumes to keep it consistent awesome work though I particularly like um, your method of studying super cool I think we can all learn a little bit from that yeah like I really like these hand models and the way that you like traced but made sure to break it down into those can you post the source of the um, hand models that you got uh, Martin that'd be really cool Hatoking.com. Thank you. So the next up is Evelyn. Oh, I see that the file is, is labeled everything is NAND, which is a different user, right? No, that's Evelyn. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I wonder whether I've always thought you were two different people, Evelyn. <laughs> and all along, you were you. Okay, let's see. Let's have a look at this. Evelyn is like, get me. <laughs> <laughs> you were here all along. I always, I think I thought everything is Nand was a different user. My goodness. I've been talking to you this whole time and didn't even know. After everything, it's still you. Oh, Dark Vault. A nice reference. Ooh. I saw this one on Twitter too. This is lovely, Evelyn. Like, you definitely used reference for this, right? Because the, the subtleties here are really nice. The drawing is really nice too, Evelyn. Like, your drawings come such a long way. I particularly like uh, this little fold. Which is something you don't see people do a lot. But I totally get that. I get that too. Yeah, fold represent. People never draw that. It's so nice to see it. Like... This is the stuff that you get from looking at reference that you might miss otherwise if you just drew a hand. Oh, you picked three keyframes. Let me see if I can find them. <laughs> Keyframe challenge. Well, I'd assume the first one's a keyframe, but I feel more like this one is because it's more cleaned up. But maybe you work like differently to me. Maybe this is like a reverse situation. So maybe the messier ones are actually the keyframes. So maybe this is keyframe one. And then that's keyframe two. And then that's keyframe three. Did I do it? <laughs> <laughs> Did I win? We're all Evelyn deep down. It does make sense. Yeah, the, the messy ones are the keyframes because I drew them. That makes sense. Yeah, lovely. It's just for me, keyframes always end up being like the really clean, nicely done drawings and then everything in between is like horribly messy. <laughs> yeah, but you don't draw them clean to begin with, so it makes sense that like the ones where you're plotting it out and figuring it out are rougher. Yeah. Lovely, lovely Evelyn. I can see a lot of like rotation happening here. It's a nice way to use the reference, for sure. Feels very convincing. Again, we see here the uh, the hand closing with the little finger first. I think this is lovely and soul. Evelyn says I added the anticipation to make it feel like animation and less rotoscoped. Oh, nice, Evelyn. What a great lesson to take from this as well. Is um, I was going to say like that. Don't be afraid to exaggerate and change things to, to make them read better as an animation. I like that you even got a grid in there, by the way. Like, thank you. <laughs> um, the grid gods have been appeased. <laughs> 
Yeah, I was going to say, don't be afraid to, to add and embellish and change the drawings to make them read better. So adding in that anticipation is a really good example of you doing that. Because it feels very satisfying with the anticipation. I honestly don't have too much to say about this, Evelyn. Like, I think you could clean it up a bit. Maybe if you cleaned it up, we'd be able to see more of the inconsistencies. But as it is now, like, this is, this is lovely. Great work, Evelyn. Yeah, like, it feels nice and consistent. The, the motion is nuanced. The drawings are nice. The anticipation you've added, I think, was a really nice thing to add. Okay. Gorgsta. I'm nitpicking. Oh no, no. Don't Prepare to get nitpicked. Okay, you get two nitpicks. Okay. I'd say one of the things you could do to make it feel even more satisfying is to um, smooth out that arc on the thumb. Um, to make it feel kind of more perfect and animated. Because um, it may very well move like this in real life. But I think that you could make the arc a little bit smoother and have it really like do an over arc, you know? Let me drag this back so you can see. So it would just be a matter of pushing that thumb up a little bit as it goes over. Because you see here, we have it goes up in this arc and then it starts to come down and then it pops up again. So I would just smooth that because down here, it feels like the arc is going to be going probably over here, right? Mm -hmm. I agree. And then it doesn't really follow that. So if you wanted to um, adjust something to make it even smoother, you could change the trajectory of that thumb, thumb slightly. Or even just adjust the, the drawing here. It's a nice S-curve actually, so you could make it more like an S-curve. Because I don't, I don't want to lose the feeling of the movement that you have at the minute. So it does seem like it's going in slightly more of an S curve. So, you know, don't be afraid to embellish that a little bit to make it feel more convincing. The arc was giving you trouble. Yeah, arcs, man. They uh, they really help though. Do you have a second nitpick? Uh, my second nitpick would just be to double check your volumes. Uh, things like the uh, the nail here. Boop, 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 boop. Just making sure that that feels like. What? It's Clyde! Ah. Oh my gosh. Welcome in. Welcome! Clyde, how are you doing? I saw that you were like taking breaks from streaming a bit bit more Ooh. since the start of the new year. How have um, you been enjoying your break and your new... Well, I think he was having issues with um, straining his eyes. So it was a sort of like a um, enforced... Good. Uh, ...thing. But yeah, hey, welcome in. I hope that you've been... Over. You, your eyes feel rested. Um, it is an Anna Morning Challenge morning for us. So we're looking at Anna Morning challenge animation submissions from um, from our community and this one is Evelyn Art Studios. Uh, this challenge this week was to animate hands. Yeah, I'm really having to nitpick with this because Evelyn's done a beautiful job. Uh, just things like the nail here is quite like long and broad um, on this middle finger and then on this frame it feels much less so even though it's foreshortened so just making sure that it still feels like it's the same mass just turned. I think is it? But that's that's pretty much all I can I can find is just clarifying some of the arcs, like refining a few of the drawings. Like I think this is beautiful, that you've done an awesome job. Nicely done, Evelyn. yeah. Nicely used reference there. I give you the gold star. <laughs> <laughs> 
there you go. <laughs> it's perfect, India. Thank you. Um, okay, let's let's head on over to Astral Library. Yay! I can guess which gesture this is. Is there going to be a lot of twists? Let's have a look. Twist. Twist. Oh my gosh, it's so grody. At least, <laughs> at least they didn't eat it. Yeah, I was scared. I felt real fear. Oh hey, Astral Library is in the uh, in the chat. Hey oh. Yeehaw! Welcome. Thanks is very much for taking part. Sorry, Mike. What were you gonna say? I was just saying, is it Astra Library or, uh, or Astra Library? The library is hard to say. Library. Library. There we go. <laughs> I like okay. the absolute non plusness. Yeah, no, I like this character model. It's fun. Uh, I think the hand rotation is, is feeling pretty nice. Um, there's a lot of rotation happening that I think. It feels pretty nice on the wrist. It feels pretty nice on the wrist. Especially here, where you get to see that, that bump of the bone and the, the tendon, the gap between the tendons here. That's really nice. Yeah. Here, I feel like we're losing a little bit of it. A little bit of the um, the feeling of dimension that the forearm has and the wrist has. Like, um, let me pop on the trace here so I can show you or at least try and work out what what it is I'm having a problem with because yeah the hand is moving up here and rotating a little bit so got this kind of thing going on I think it's just my other forearm feeling like it might need to move a little bit more than it currently does like the elbow would be moving here for this kind of rotation i think to actually rotate the the arm sorry to rotate the hand in that manner it'd be very weird to rotate that just from the wrist um i think the elbow would need to get involved and therefore i think the forearm would probably go off the screen more at this kind of angle as the elbow comes forward that makes sense. Feels a bit more natural to me. The main note that I had that I saw was that I think your flick isn't reading as well as it could because rather than have the finger expand outward when you flick, you have the finger which is flicked, the, the bogey is flicked off immediately curled in. If you do that gesture yourself, just flick your little finger. The little finger remains outwards. You can't flick the finger with the finger immediately coming back in. Oh yeah. So I think that's the first thing that we can like really clarify. Oh no! Clyde says I started streaming just now and a storm killed my connection, so here we are. No. Well, we're happy that it means that you're here chilling with us, but I'm I'm sad that it means that we can't, for example, raid you soon and that you're not able to stream like you wanted to. I'm sorry that you got stormed. So if I was to flick then it might actually be the thumb which curls in more. I'm just doing it myself now. We will try our best to be your community's consolation prize. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think the thumb itself would would go back more. But the finger would expand outwards. I'm flicking now and that's what's happening with my hand, so. I can only speak for my hand, but that's that's what's going on. That's where it's at. I'm just doing it a couple more times to check. Your hand. Yeah, I feel like that wrist uh, pose feels a little bit um, painful as well. Yeah, it gets a little... It gets a little scrunched up. <laughs> I'm tempted just to, like, 
ease the burden there by moving the again don't be scared to move the elbow like a lot of the movement of our hands comes from the elbow rather than the wrist it's very rare that we move just from the wrist evelyn has proposed that you may be flicking it the wrong way the wrong way yeah i don't know how i mean i know it's going off this direction um because we have this trail here But let me know if I've misinterpreted oh, what you mean. Yeah, I think it's more like the thumb is flicking it off the um, pinky. Okay. So they're flicking it off. Oh, the I see. I see. I see. I see. I see. I see. One sec. Let me do this. Let me let me recreate this. Bogulus. <laughs> Never fear. Tis bogulus. Okay. In which case, it feels like that bogey wouldn't be going, <laughs> wouldn't be going across as it is. Um, let me just erase this. Hold on. Uno momento, por favor. There we go. Um, in which case, it feels kind of like the bogey's going to be like that, <laughs> right? It's going to have a bit more of an arc Bing. going on. And that thumb's probably going to go up, because my thumb does. My thumb's like... Expands right outwards. Yeah, because it gets caught under the finger a little bit, right? So it's going to... Be doing this. Nice catch there, Evelyn. Let's see? You've been following the reference you recorded, but obviously there was no bogey to actually flick. <laughs> well, good job on you for recording reference. I think some of these hand poses like are super nice and nuanced, so you can definitely see that the reference was uh, was used. We totally believe you, by and the way. It's useful. What? We totally believe him that there was, there was no there was no bogey there was no involved bogey. in the reference. Yeah, totally, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. Let me just. I'm just again I'm checking with my my own hand what I'm doing. I'm so happy that we have hands. You know, not only to draw the hands, but also to be able to do stuff like I'm just gonna check my hand again and see what my hand does. I'm glad we have hands too. Yeah. Yeah. If anything then Yeah, if you want to move the hand down a little bit, I think you can do that, but it might need to go up a little bit on the wrist on the other side. Again, just to to make sure that the wrist isn't going to start feeling like it's cramping up. Yeah. Just keeping your rough shape. And then maybe just show that little finger coming down. So that we can kind of trace the movement of that. You can have it disappear into the fist um, in the next frame. I'd be tempted to even take it bigger, maybe. I'll in take care of the calls. Robin um, says that I feel like a straight line would make it feel more powerful as an action, even if it's not perfectly right. Uh, okay, but I'd still say that I don't think it would um, shoot straight off to the left. Yeah. So have a straight line but have it go slightly up um because it's going to clarify the action to make it do that because otherwise it might end up <laughs> it may end up feeling the same way that i felt which is like oh if it's being flicked off that way the flick has to be like this you know it should support the action so be fair. You could do you could do this if you wanted to have it a straight line. It feels more natural to do it the way that you assumed they were doing. Well, that's just how I would do it, but uh, that's more natural for me, but not necessarily more natural for everyone. Ow! And cramp. Are you okay? Are you trying to to flick? 
Yeah. But my, my hand actually like started to seize up, yeah. Not enough practice licking bogeys, Mike. No, not at all, one might say. There you are. Don't be don't be afraid to move the elbow. I just put clarify. Hand position or hand pose. But and don't be afraid to move the elbow. Don't be afraid. I come in peace. Where's that from? I come in love. Oh, what? It's from The Simpsons where um, Mr. Burns is mistaken for an alien. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. It's been in my head since I was like 11. <laughs> oh, Evelyn got it. <laughs> Evelyn, you get me. I bring you love. I don't recognize it. <laughs> yeah, Ben gets it too. He brings his love. Get him. <laughs> is it one of the like, hor like the horror ones, or is it just a normal episode? No, I think it's just a normal episode. It's it's the one that the figure comes from that I wanted to get Declan for his birthday. Oh, okay. Um. <laughs> Yeah. There we go. So yeah, really nice rotation here. Really liking that. This anticipation, I think you could. In fact, it might be nice to just push that wrist out a little bit. I think you could just make sure that the... Uh, the wrist rotation here feels natural. Which requires, I think, just moving it a little bit more than you have at the minute. I mean, that sounds like a Bloodborne moment. Hallucinating, getting dilated pupils and glowing. Sounds like one of the creatures from a Sofka's clinic. Sorry? I was just saying, I, hallucinating, getting dilated pupils and glowing sounds like something from myself because the clinic from Bloodborne. I wouldn't know, I haven't played Bloodborne. Mm. You're looking at me like you want me to weigh in and I'm like, sure! I was just like looking Bloodborne. at you to let you know that you can continue with your more like, you know, constructive words. Okay. It might be nice to add like a little bit of easing here so that, um, the the hand settles into this a little bit more rather than just stopping immediately on this frame i like the overshoot on the finger i think you could keep that while having the actual hand itself do like a very subtle movement cushion down into its position so that you have those two yeah so that you have those two um offsetting each other because the movement that the the wrist and the hand has done here is is really big so I think just having it settle a little bit into that is going to be nice. You can maybe just draw the bottom left part of the hand and I only see. that. I see, Mike. To show, to show how that would move. Okay, Mike. All right. You see what he's doing. Trying like to save you time. Damage controlling me. If I took the brakes off. And they would just reanimate all of your clips. I wouldn't reanimate them. <laughs> okay. Sure. Lies. But I would I would spend a very long time on each one. <laughs> Imagining that Mr. Burns as a bloodborne enemy is fantastic. We need these mods. Oh my god. Oh, you just replace all of the bloodborne monsters and we bosses with I'm in pee. with Simpsons characters. That's Thomas the Tank Engine Skyrim level modding. Yeah. Again here, like watch watch the elbow position. That might be one of my main notes for this one, is just watch the elbow position. Um because right now it feels like the Again it's it's the syndrome where uh, you're moving the the chicken's body and the head staying still. Mm. It feels like the hand is staying still while all the movement is happening in the wrist. 
Um, so I just move that hand over a little bit so it feels less like the larger part of the body is having to compensate to keep the smaller part of the body in the same place. Especially because we're moving forward anyway. Mm -hmm. um, in the next frame, I just ease that maybe to like here-ish instead. So that the elbow is still moving back, but the hand is also starting to move forward because of that. Like here again, there's like a wrist, a wrist rotation which feels slightly odd on the elbow. Just make sure you're thinking about like how this hand is joining onto the elbow and how the movements are going to affect the elbow. Like yeah, especially on the flick, it feels like the elbow is staying in the same place while the hand's like jerking back into an almost uncomfortable wrist position. Which I think would be really hard to do. Yeah. So that's 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 what I think everything else is like really nice. I think the hand poses here are really nice. Um Yeah. Like I think it might be nice to just clarify a couple of them a little bit. Just in terms of making sure that we understand that, for example, you know, this is joined onto that. Mm -hmm. And then this is on the other side of the wrist, the thumb pad here. Like I think sometimes the fingers are getting a little bit big and the palms getting a little bit small to the point where the hand stops making as much sense in terms of the draftsmanship of it. So just to like double check that the, the hand drawings um, are translating properly. Like I feel like the knuckle here, the hand is more foreshortened than I've drawn it here. So I think that's, you know, that's why the knuckles will be brought more over this way. Like I think you're right about that. I think that you'd still be able to see the pad of the hand though. So it might be worth just double checking. Making sure that um, the construction isn't getting lost and you know what's happening in every frame. It's just, I guess, check, check hand construction and draw it better than I did here. <laughs> I love this exchange between me and Vert. It's like I just realized that Jim Carrey is on the corner with the hook finger. I'm like, how dare you? That's Carrie Hughes. <laughs> oh my God, it is. Awesome work. Watch elbow. Lovely work. I love that you took reference for this. It's awesome. Did you actually place your finger in your nose? Oh, you're right. Astro Library. I'm such a dumbass. Um, such a dumbass. Let me look at this again. I think this is um, indicative though of like the confusion that comes with not having a, not feeling like the hand is like clarified completely. So yeah, the closest finger to us is the um, index. So the thumb is on that side. Right, gotcha. Yeah, you've got a little bit of a spiral thing going on with yeah. tangents and stuff there. 
But Mike, would you do me a favor? Would yeah. you make this hand pose towards me so I can actually see what it would look like? Uh, which hand is it? Uh, this one? Nope. Yep. And you need to rotate around so that your index finger is pointing towards me. Oh, is that crossing over the body? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. And then rotate slightly more towards me because you're a bit side on right now. Cool. Thank uh -huh. you. So, yeah, let's see. We have. This is really painful to hold. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> like, I think one of the things is that this uh, thumb doesn't really feel like it's going back in space. As it kind of would be. To do this pose. Uh, it being very side on, I think, is one of the reasons that it feels like it should be in the back a bit more. Can you um, close your for your index finger, Michael? Hmm? Can you close your index finger? Yeah, thank you. So there would be overlap here, I think, over the top of the thumb. More like this, and I'd shut this bone out a little bit just to clarify it. And then, of course, nails are your friend, because we can show that the thumb is facing away from us like that. Just trying to break that wrist a little bit less so it's a little bit less painful. I was talking with India the other day, talking about how, like, when you go swimming, I don't know yeah. if you guys feel this as well, whether this is a universal feeling, but I, whenever I, someone goes, Hey, do you want to go swimming? My initial reaction is like, No, nah, I don't really want to go swimming. But it's really, I don't want to go through the rigmarole of going into the changing rooms, buying a ticket, finding a locker, changing, undressing, putting on the shorts, going through the showers. But once I'm actually in the pool, I'm like, this is fucking fantastic. This is the best. Why don't I do this all the time? <laughs> and you're swimming around and it's great. And that's kind of a little bit what drawing's like. It's like, you don't really feel like drawing. And then it's not until you're like actually in the midst of a drawing that you're like, oh, this is pretty cool. So it, you don't you don't really have the oh, I really want to go swimming feeling with drawing sometimes. So waiting for to get you to get that feeling is almost like you just got to go to the pool and get yourself just just get in the pool. <laughs> Dog, there's a global pandemic. Stop going to public swimming pools. There is a huge shortage of public swimming pools in Dublin, I'll tell you. Yeah, we've we've been like looking because we love swimming, but there's there's already like nothing close by us. The only time we've ever been swimming in Dublin, well in Ireland, is when we've been to visit hotels. <laughs> we've stayed in hotels and they happen to have had swimming pools. So yeah, I hope I hope this is helpful. You can see they're just clarifying I find that a little bit, I think, helps. You want to just uh, get a few reference pictures of the hand to make it feel a bit more natural and to clarify that posing a bit. Use your nail, use your joints, uh, use overlap to try and show what's going away from you in space and what's coming towards you in space. I want to replace the word motivation with momentum in the artist's vocabulary. Like, I don't have momentum to draw. It's like, yeah, because you're still, you're, you're, you haven't you're, done it yet. Yeah, you're still, you're like, you've not started moving yet. So the only way you build up momentum is by drawing. Mm -hmm. You don't get motivation and then draw. You get motivated by drawing. So you got to start and then keep going. Uh, starting is like the hardest part. Well, I lie. Starting is the hardest part, and then doing it is the hardest part, and, and then, then finishing it's the hardest part. <laughs> Every part is the hardest part. Like, I've been writing uh, story synopsises lately. 
And starting is definitely... Oh, Skyry Tunes, thank you very much. Scry Tunes, there we are. I said it right. Scry Tunes. Thank you so much for the subscription. Is, is what you're really saying, Indy, is stop waiting for it to get easier because it never does. Pretty much. Suck it up. I think... Well, suck it up is such a, like, <laughs> asshole thing to say, but I've been trying to write story synopsises lately and um, starting is really, really hard. But once I get started, it's it's fun and I get into it and I'm like, yeah, this is awesome. Then I run into a problem. And then that's the middle part you're in where you started, but then you have issues that you have to fix with it. And then that's the hardest part, because I'm like, how the heck does this work? How can I slot these two ideas together elegantly? This is really hard. And then once you've got over those problems, finishing it's the hardest part, because then you're like, okay, now I have to actually polish it and like explain it to someone else and start like using the story synopsis to make the story. And then that's the hardest part. So. Hey guys. I know what happens next in Girl in the Glim. Suck it. Is that what happens next? No. <laughs> I just want to, I want a humble brag. All right, let's do this one. And then if it's okay with you, Mike, is it okay for me to finish these last five tomorrow? No, they're dead. No, they're dead to us now. They're dead to us now. Yeah. They're not dead to us. Don't lie. It took too long. No, come on. Come out! Come out! He's lying. But it's what about insane. all the people who came to view it today? I mean, okay, I could take a break and then keep going. How long of a break do you need? The break's fine. I don't know. <laughs> if you, we can do it tomorrow. We can, we can totally do it tomorrow. Doing this is hard on my brain. Okay. You took too long. Now your candy is gone. Yeah, says the person who did like a bunch of critiques for the first time ever last week and then afterwards was like, I'm exhausted! <laughs> Can't believe you give me such a hard time. Um, oh, I won't put tracing paper on yet. Let's watch it first. This is from Blossom Bun. Oh, the horse. This is very nice. Lovely gesture. I feel like the position of the elbow like feels feels kind of natural too. Mm. She's nice. This is lovely work. Blossom we skipped button. two Hardik Emlet and then we um You know what? Show Hardix as well. Really, show Hardix really again. The stream, yeah. Again as well. Yeah. Again. It was all showing favoritism. I like Habo. I don't. I love him. But there's like 90 people here, so I think it'd be nice to be Yeah, here. that's true. Habo's is, is wonderful. Let me show. So Anima Tuning's in the chat did this animation of uh, Zagreus from... Um... You know, I'm sorry, I'm trying. But it's just not showing. Wow. Uh, it's, sh okay. it's showing the notes on Habos, but it's showing honey blossoms. Oh, wait, here it is. There we go. It's worked. Okay, let me take the notes off so you guys can see it without them. There we go. There you go, Amlet. Lovely and soul. <laughs> India, that's favoritism. Doig, yes. <laughs> Pretty much. That, so let me... That's what you receive if you, you know, turn up for however many years and they're generally an awesome person. You get... Oh, I thought you were saying they receive Habbo's animation. Oh. <laughs> I was like, what are we giving Habbo's work as a reward now? No, I just mean... <laughs> he's, he's part of the gang. How is everything you say feel so confrontational, even when it's a compliment towards someone? That's what you get <laughs> if you show up on your kind. <laughs> I didn't God say, chat. <laughs> I didn't say it like that at all. <laughs> at, at all. Someone in chat back me up that like, that's hilarious. Okay, I think maybe one of the things that we could look to um, to push here is the spacing. 
<laughs> if you're in chat, let me know if you use references because this is lovely. Like, I really like it. Uh, the subtlety of these fingers of the um, the index settling first and the others curling back around, really nice. Nice hand construction, nice rotation going on. Um, nice composition with the, the horse head coming in. The spacing here at the beginning, I think, is a thing that is, is catching me a little bit. So, we have some nice spacing going on here. Then large spacing here. And then the spacing suddenly gets very small. And then large spacing again, and then very small. And then large spacing again. Very small. And then large spacing and settle. So this strange stop startiness. Like if I was to do a uh, an animation chart of it. Mm -hmm. And please do not count the drawings I use on this because this is not going to be accurate. But it feels like something like this is happening. So I would just want to um, take these these center drawings and space them out a little bit, not evenly, but like try and get that feeling of um, of ease that you want with it. So if you're new to animation charts, think about the the distance between each of those notches as like the distance between uh, between the movements in the hand. Exactly. So, so. even spacing. <laughs> Look at this straight line I drew. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> so even spacing um, would be like this ish, even. Yeah, yeah. And then if you would have say a cushion or an ease at either end it would be like this kind of thing so you're essentially saying this is drawing one this is drawing two, three, four, five, six, seven and then these are the drawings in between and how close they are to one another you know so for example um, three and four are much more different than two and three are. Like one, two and three, the drawings are like fairly close together spacing wise, the drawings are quite similar. Um, whereas four, we have like a big jump to like an in-between between the two poses. If that makes sense. One, mm, mm. one two, three, four, five, six, Seven. There now they both have the same amount of drawings on them, but the spacing is different on each. Yeah, that's right. Little puffling. Um, the animator's survival kit is a really great book um, by Richard Williams, and <laughs> we have three copies of it here because India has uh, two, and I have one. One of them. So it feels like the spacing stutters a bit. So let me, so that's like kind of medium spacing. Then that's a large jump here. So large spacing. In fact, let me number the drawings. That will help. So one, two, three. Thank you for the follow. Welcome in. Four, and this is all on two so far. Five. In fact, is it on threes even? One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yes, yeah, so those are on threes. This is on. In fact, this might get really confusing really fast because I'm going to have to explain twos and threes as well. So, <laughs> so maybe I won't number them all. Maybe I won't. But suffice to say, my point is that the spacing between, um, let me just take this off as well. The spacing between this drawing and this drawing is very large. Whereas the space between this drawing and this drawing, which is the next one, is very small. The spacing here is very large and then we get very small spacing again. 
then very large, then very small, then very large, and it just creates this kind of stuttery effect. So I'd probably make these into more like in-betweens between the two drawings. So I am to just do some very very fast drawings. Some very fast drawings. Probably do something a bit more like this. What's happening with the thumb? It's opening more. Whoops. And that's going down. Okay. And then we have this drawing. And then again, very close spacing, and then that drawing. So I'd probably bring this more into like this kind of thing. So it's more of an in between between the two. And then again, the spacing here. It's very even. But I'd rotate that more. Take that here and. Whoops. Start that finger traveling. There we go. And then the rest is all gravy, the rest is all easing. When you're doing these, do you see the drawing before you draw it? Or do you um, figure out as you draw it? I just, I don't know. It's hard to explain. It just feels right. Okay. You know? Oh, you're one of those. <laughs> what does that mean? You're just one of those artists. I don't know what that means. It just, it just feels right. Aww. It's like you're hooking into some resonant force. No. Like it's Jedi. No, it's, it's more like, I, yeah, I kind of see the line in my head and then I remember where it is and then I try to put it in the same place. You remember where it is. Yeah. Like When did you see it? <laughs> I when I was flipping between the two drawings, I okay. was like, okay, it feels like the if I was to put a pose between these two, I'd probably do something like this. And then I flip back and I'm like, did I get it right? Right, okay. Remembering where it is makes more sense when you when I put it when you put it in the context of like flipping between the frames. I just felt like it was like so on Tuesday, I saw a line. And then you're like, on Friday, you're like, I remember it. The line. It goes here. Oh, no. Screwed up. It's okay, I fix it. We can say yes. I wonder why the expression is to screw up. Um. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Because up is usually good. But to screw up is to, to, to is bad. Well, I mean, I guess it means, like, it depends if you're saying you're screwed. Screwed being another word for sexed. <laughs> you're sexed. You sexed up. I don't it's know. so weird that I... we use, like, expressions for that as, like, a weird kind of dominant insult. I, like, there's I so guess. many insults based on, like having sex with someone it's like yeah it's really strange because it's, it's all taboo though like a lot of insults are based around genitalia i know it's weird imagine if we lived in a culture where elbows were forbidden from being seen <laughs> and were seen as like extremely kinky and we'd be like you elbow was that not the same for ankles at one point as well though yeah back in victorian era where Table legs had to be covered up because people would get too horny seeing them because they'd <laughs> remind them of legs of ladies that they were forbidden to see. That's not true. Oh yeah? You don't think so? Uh, no. Table legs. Yeah. N no. Yeah, because table legs are shapely like lady legs. The forbidden fruit of the lady leg. So they saw wood and got wood. They're very, very good. Like, very good. <laughs> Bert's like, lol, you ankle. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's it's weird. Can't believe that you ankled him like that. <laughs> Tibbs is like, I saw a line the other day. 
I wonder where it goes. Aha, there it is. That's where the line lives. India, according to Doi. <laughs> That's what it sounded like. I remember where it is. There we go. I, I, I whited out some of the um, the previous drawings just to try and just to try and make it easier to check if this feels right or not because it's kind of difficult. Kind of wish that I'd done it in a grey colour. I think that thumb could do a little bit of work. Well, yeah. Uh, uh, I think in so, general it's, it's going okay. So screwed up is bad and, and screwed is sexed. And a positive phrase I should adopt is I sex down. But like you say, I got down tonight. Like I personally am well, off put you, by like to? how like violent and dominant a lot of like insults are when they relate to sex. Yeah. It's like kind of creepy and scary <laughs> to yeah. be honest. That like the way that people say I beat them in games and stuff is to like be like I assaulted them sexually and it's like oh my gosh why do we say that? That's awful. <laughs> like why is that so horrible? Jeez. I think humans have a lot of weird hang-ups or society has a lot of weird hang-ups about sex and I don't like it. I don't like it how weird it makes it feel. You'd rather it was just more pragmatic and just... I'd rather we didn't use it as a way to, like, say that we've dominated someone. Yeah. You know? Your Majesty a Cloud! I think this is going to be our last one for today and then we're going to do the rest of them tomorrow. Yeah. You know, if you wanted to push this even more, it might be nice to have the uh, the hand kind of react to the breath a little bit. Just a tiny bit. Just to be like, these two things are in the same place and there's a reaction to feeling the hot breath on the hand. Where it's like, haha, I made tender consensual love to you in that game. Oh, you know what, Bert? Actually, that's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That's what it should be. <laughs> you know, you that way everybody wins. You are cordially invited to dine with me and afterwards we might make sandwiches together in that game. Pong. <laughs> You're so weird, mate. Looking down like he's upset, but he knows that I like it. Yeah, beautiful work, Blossom Bun. Really lovely stuff. I think the spacing is pretty much the only thing that I could see with it. Like, you could add a little bit more settle if you wanted to, but it's, it's not you know necessary. But you could, if you wanted to, just really smooth that down into a position. <laughs> GG easy and a gentle kiss on the forehead. Oh, I kind of want to be what able to go. What does GG easy mean? Good game, easy. Oh, it's a new one I haven't heard before. You've never That's heard... a new one the kids are using. You've never heard. Which one of those have you not seen before? Uh, it's never usually easy. You've never seen easy before. No, not like. Maybe people have said it, and I just thought they were saying easy. They are saying easy. Yeah, but I've never seen it said, like abbreviated and added onto the end of GG. I've never seen that before. I like it. GG easy. <laughs> Good game easy. I'm DJ GG easy. <laughs> and this is my track. <laughs> nice Mike, you'd make a great DJ. Thank you. Oh me... bad man, you come down here in your <laughs> little jet. You come and get the key to the shitty. There's no god up here, only Batman. <laughs> Batman loves the circus. <laughs> I showed Mike um, Holy Musical Batman, which is um, a Batman musical by the Star Kid team, and it's just hilarious. I love it so much. I think Mike was enjoying it too. I was. I was enjoying it too. Holy Musical Batman. Oh, that Batman! Gotta love him! <laughs> I love Commissioner Gordon. He's just an old man. Just shaking the entire time. It was really <laughs> impressive how constant they were shaking. Yeah, I think that's the same uh, 
same actor who plays Malfoy in the Harry Potter one, and Malfoy was like my favorite character. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. They're really good, that actor. Robin creeped me out. <laughs> good. He's good. He, he, we didn't finish watching it, but I can guarantee you Robin will continue to creep you out. Oh, no. The boy Yes, wonder. I'd like that. <laughs> would, you, would, you, would you like to fight crime together? Yes, I'd like that. <laughs> but yeah, I recommend it. If you guys like Batman, if you guys like musicals, then Holy Musical Batman is very funny. Pass the mustard, Batman. <laughs> Lauren Lopez is Malfoy. They are amazing. So good. Pass the mustard, Batman. <laughs> yeah, I love that too. <laughs> Alfred just exposes Bruce in the middle of a dinner party. <laughs> Batman. Batman. I really enjoy your Michael Caine. <laughs> I think I can't do it on command. I'm so bad. Hello, Batman. No, it's terrible. Never mind. <laughs> but yeah, I did that. Everyone no, keep pretending that they keep, think it was good. Keep trying. No. <laughs> keep trying. Master Wayne. <laughs> Why do we fall, Master Wayne? <laughs> there you go. The person in mus uh, Holy Musical Batman does a very good Michael Caine impression. He does, yeah. Seuss from Gravity Falls. Like, I don't. I Seuss to me sounds like the uh, house party guy. <laughs> oh, How's it going, dude? He does actually, yeah. I wonder if it's the same voice actor. Probably not. Oh, yeah, probably not. India um, showed me more of the clip of the o Obama thing from Game Room, so I'm now caught up on so that. So now you actually know the joke. Well, Danny and Arnold! Man. Love those guys! <laughs> you know what I, I don't get though is uh why he stopped animating? <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll stop talking about Game Grummers bits and musicals and let you guys go and get and go and raid somebody. Who will go and raid? Are we ending? I, well, I thought I Not thought you were like, giving me the choice. Okay, what would you like to do, Mike? Raid. Would you like to critique some people? No. Or do you want to raid someone? I'll raid someone. I don't know. It's just like seeing the number of viewers we have. I feel, I feel like I should entertain some more. You just up to Congress. <laughs> what if they critique us? Dance, Mike. <laughs> Do it. Put on your webcam and entertain the people. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys all for being here. Stream hold. You would if you could. I would if I could. Your stream machine. Yeah. We should just plug you in. To what? The wall and to use wall. you to stream. <laughs> I don't get the internet, India. I don't have Wi-Fi enabled. Yeah, we can change that. We'll upgrade you. Don't worry. Yeah, um, sorry, Gav Madrid. Uh, we've, we've been going for a couple of hours already. Oh, yeah. Follow us on Twitter. <laughs> you miss Buffy Cam. Oh, man. We'll see if we can get it back someday. But he's not in the room at the minute. I don't know where she is. He's probably being sick somewhere. Or peeing on the floor. Look, I'll show you something cool as well. Um, Here's, a, here's an animation that... Oh, I don't even know if this works. Let's try it. What are you doing? You madman. Yeah, it worked. I haven't finished this entire screen yet, but the animation is for The Girl in the Glim. It's a comic that India's going to be working on this year. Sponsored by IDW Publishing. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's going to be published by <laughs> IDW. <laughs> Stream sponsored by IDW. I should, I, I'll add a bit of text. Look, we'll do it in real time. Add. No, Mike, text. it's fine. No one wants... In your effort to entertain, and I appreciate it, but no one wants to sit here and watch you construct a stream overlay in front of them. I disagree. You know, Mike, you could finish the second shot of that that I animated. Oh my gosh, I'm seeing it come up on the screen. 
girl in the is it girl in the glim or is it the girl in the glim i know that on the book it's <laughs> the girl in the glim but yeah. I, I only ever call it girl in the glim me too i'm used to calling it girl in the glim but it's called the girl and the glim are you sure yeah, just like the Mask of the Mountain and the Witch of the West and every other thing I've ever made up in my life. <laughs> I have a formula, okay? I like oh how Pablo is calling you out for not knowing and I don't know. Oh, <laughs> I know. I know. But I'm. It was, it was more like reiterating the question. I'm used to calling it Gatka. Thanks, guys. It is a second shot of this. <laughs> Which one day, maybe Mike will uh, will finish. Yeah, I will. I'm going to make this our outro screen, I think. Our intro. It's very ominous for an outro or intro <laughs> screen. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, here's our actual in outro. Where you can see some of the cool stuff we worked on before. That's, that's, that's the wolves being all sad. In Holy musical wolfman! <laughs> in Magnum Bullets. Um, by Nightrunner. You're gonna do a hype reel for the start of the stream? Oh, I wanna. I do want to. Oh. I do want to. Yeah, we've made sure to only <clears throat> include the shots that, that I animated. Yeah, we did that video! Yeah! We worked with, with Knights to do it. Pat, our, our pal, directed it. I got to do some boards. I got to do some animation. It, it was good time! It was a real good time! That was actually the first project that Knights ever took on. It just took us longer to uh, to get that one out because we had about three other projects overlap it at the same time. One of which was Starlight Brigade. Fucking follow us. <laughs> All right, Mike. <laughs> put your sass away. Put, it, put your sass back in your pocket. No, it's all over the floor now. Oh no, he spilled his sass everywhere. Yeah, if you've been watching this stream for like more than five minutes and you've enjoyed yourself, consider giving us a follow. It, it's free. Consider selling us your soul. Yeah, how were we able to do both those epic projects at the same time? We didn't. One <gasps> was put on hi hiatus. Yeah. And as soon as Starlight finished, it was like, hey, we're going to jump back onto this one now. Yeah. I jumped off. I jumped off Magnum Bullets to direct Starlight Brigade. And during that time, no work was really done on Mike and Bullets, which is why it took so long to come out. It's because we finished Starlight and then we pinged straight back to Mike and Bullets and we're like, quick, everybody, back on that project. So, so yeah. That's why even though Mike and Bullets was commissioned first, it came out second. But the clients were, were super understanding about it. So that was really cool of them. Yeah. 10 out of 10 clients would, would work for again. Yeah. 100%. Alrighty. I didn't mean to say percent, but I did. <laughs> you did. It's a terrible word. You, it is, actually. <laughs> yeah, the clients were the same. That's probably how we got away with it, was um, the fact that the clients who were commissioning us for Magnum Bullets and Starlight Brigade were basically the same people. So they were like very understanding in that you know, yes, okay, if you do this other video for us, you might have to take longer on that that first one we asked for, that's fair. And uh, we just finished up work on... Mystic Crystal. The next one. Magnum Bullets Always wanting more Magnum <laughs> Bullets <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> I don't think that's how it goes. Sing the whole thing, India. No, I'm not going to sing the whole thing. Sing please. the whole thing. Nope. Sing it. Never. When is Who your, are we raiding, Mike? When, I don't know. When's your cover album coming what? out? There's not going to be one. When are you going to make? I want to make original stuff. When are you going to make a cover album? I'm not. I'm sorry. There's, who should I pass these people on to? Ah, who's streaming? Nick. Nick. <gasps> Nick Waz is playing Cyber Shadow. And India. What? We were given a code 
Steam code for Cyber Shadow. What's Cyber Shadow? It's a ninja game. Sounds dumb. About What's Cyber robots Shadow? and ninjas. Robots and ninjas? Yeah. Wait, I take it back. <laughs> that sounds cool. So I want to play that on stream soon. Okay. I'm yeah. up for that. Yeah. I want to play more games. It's got ninjas. Okay. It's a 2D thing. I like so, 2D. Um... Robots and ninjas, yeah. Oh my so gosh, we... that should be a game though. <laughs> okay, I'll initiate the raid on 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 Nick. Sale. <laughs> raid channel. Nick's a good good artist, cool guy. Everybody shout sale when they get to his stream. <laughs> this is how we show our love. Sale. Here we go. Raid initiated. <laughs> We are truly now ending. Will there be a new one this week? There will. Uh, give me till tomorrow uh, to think of it. Because I haven't um, put any attention on it yet. But I will give you guys the next challenge tomorrow after we finish the critiques. <laughs> Take a day of off. <laughs> put your feet up. Kale. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. This is how I make a salad kale. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I swim in the sea, whale. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I save my boat, pale. Nice. I thought you were going to say flail. How would flailing save your boat? That's part of the joke, is that it's ineffectual. Oh. Oh, I see. <laughs> Three day old fool stale. <laughs> I, I said fool is of food. <laughs> but. Male. <laughs> 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 you guys, too good. Okay, we're heading off. Yeah, the stream's over, guys. Time to bail. <laughs> <laughs> May the rest of your day be filled with adventure. adventure. Take care, everyone. Bye bye.